Does this look okay? Oh, wow. Wait, this is the best my stream has ever looked. <laughs> what is going on? Okay. I kind of fuck with it. Hold on. I gotta make sure it's not my trip in there. What if I just... And I start doing this. Will it cause the stream to be blurry? Let's see. Because if not, I think we're good. Beautiful. It looks okay. <laughs> it's it's acceptable. I'll take it. <laughs> Better than what I had before. All right. All right. Let's begin. Youngsters over here. Finally, you're here. Is something the matter? Oh. Are you, young lady, are you the daughter of the Feiyun, com uh, Feiyun Commerce Skills Manager? I've heard all the strange, all the rumors I've heard have spoke of a young master. Uh, nope. Oh my, so you aren't the Commerce Skills young lady. My apologies, I was considering only your wondrously fashionable attire and your flying companion. Your conduct, too, so, well, was so unlike ours that I'd assumed that you must have come from the Year Harbor to discuss matters with us. Liu? Liu, I think? Liu, I am surnamed, and all of the village call me Grandpa Liu. Uh... <clears throat> Apologize, I must. What the fuck are you, Yoda? <laughs> uh, recent years have not been kind. I have not eaten the tea to treat you to as guests. <sighs> there we go. Uh, the Adepta will certainly not be satisfied with the tea ceremony this year. Huh? Uh, Grandpa, the stuff right by you, aren't those tea leaves? <sighs> the quality is far too lacking. How could I possibly serve such things to my gal? Oh. My bad. Hold up. Let me turn, let me turn off my, <laughs> let me turn off Facebook. <laughs> oh God. I, I forgot that was here. Let me mute that. My bad. Uh, how could I possibly serve such things to my guests? <sighs> Speaking honestly, we are waiting for someone from the Feiyun Commerce Guild, for we must discuss with them the tea leaf problem. They are our biggest customers, after all. The crux of the matter is that this batch of tea is, well, simply unsatisfactory, whether it be in terms of taste or quantity. This is an open secret among tea merchants. Old Luo... The village chief has also decided that no tea may be sold until the quality problem is solved. I've heard tell that the young master of the Commerce Guild is exceptionally smart and skilled. If he has caught wind that this year's tea harvest was lacking in both quality and quantity, I thought he would come in person, or if not, send someone here, so here I wait. Anyway, the problem is with the tea leaves. I believe it lies within the soil. Problem with the soil? Indeed. I've lived here my entire life and worked with tea since I was a wee lad. And I can notice problems like others may miss. That others may miss. As I see it, may Adeptus Fujin bless us. 
It may be an imbalance in our soil and water. Adeptus fugin. So, oh, so you've also heard the tale? That's quite rare, even among locals, if you remember. Many, many years ago, Chaoying village was nothing but a barren hill. Terrifying demons dwelt here, and it was all thanks to Adeptus fugin that the demons were or defeated and tea trees were planted allowing our ancestors to come live here but if it's really a problem with the water and soil then i don't know what we can do about it actually that's exactly why we you know come to investigate oh so does that mean you believe me young lady i mean whether or not i believe you is irrelevant the one who commissioned me believes you oh is that so then that makes things easy Come, come, I'll bring the tea leaf samples and let's have a talk with old Lor. Hmm. Something wrong, Grandpa? Young ladies, if it isn't too much trouble, could you pretend you are from the Feiyun Commerce Guild when we are meeting from with old Lor? Well, this Chief Lor is a good person, but how do I put this? He puts more trust in machines, cultivation techniques, fertilizers, and things like that. I mentioned an imbalance in the soil and water before, and, well, we parted on bad terms, but if it was the young lady of the Feiyun Commerce Guild, I guess I can give it a try. Doesn't seem like a good plan to find one. Ah, yeah, don't worry. Even if you cease through it, it's nobody's idea but mine. None of the blame shall fall on you. Let's go. Okay, well, shit. Let's get it. <sighs> up we go. Let's go up here. Oh wait, there's a cat that needs uh, feeding, right? Because the got there we go. Beautiful. Touch the dish. There we go. I fucking wrangled that thing out of the Malkin's mouth. There you go. Thank you. This batch still isn't any good. They're not fragrant enough when you dry them, and they get so dry and brittle that you can't even put them in the roller. Even the ones that survive the secondary process has come out of the other end a complete fucking disaster. Are you sure it isn't a problem with the machine? Are you sure you haven't forgotten how to operate it? What a thing to say. How could we dare be to be careless with you looking over our shoulders? <laughs> how could you indeed? Ah, yeah, it's Grandpa Lou. Jean, get back to worse. And this respectable looking young miss is. Haha, <laughs> I'm a young lady of the Fei Commerce Guild. Hey! Who just calls the fuck? Uh, this is my servant. It will suffice. <laughs> it will suffice to call her Mini Pie. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 that's that's it. Call me Mini Pie. Oh, in that case, welcome, welcome. A guest like you is a rare treat indeed. We've been quite reliant on the assistance of the Commerce Guild for many a year, but as for what happened this year, I suspect you already heard about it. What's wrong? You're looking pretty miserable. Did Jean mess up work at, mess up at work again? <laughs> you old mocking me again. <clears throat> My apologies, dear guests. Normally I would invite guests from afar to sample our new teas, but this year's batch... Well, you know. Well, no need to stand on ceremony, Chief Lo. We're here to help. 
Yeah, the young lady is very concerned about the tea leaves, so there's no need to be so tied up with the formalities, Chief Lul. <laughs> very well then. To tell the truth, this batch of the tea leaves is no good either. They can't be dried, and I can't tell if they were bad when they were picked or if it's a problem with the machine in our workshop. <laughs> well, how's that difficult? Why not just use some of the older leaves you have in stock and see if the product you get from drying them is any different? If the product is normal, then you know it isn't a problem with the machine. Oh, seriously, I told you before. Forget it. As we have important guests present, then we'll give your method a try. Jin, do you have any fresh tea leaves remaining from older batches? There's some in the warehouses. What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, good one. We've been talking here for a good long while now, and you weren't listening to a single word, were you? <sighs> just, just go fetch some of the older batches and process it along with some of the newer stuff that Grandpa Lou brought using the machine. Don't you dare skip a single step. I'll be watching you. Well, after a bit, he brings back two batches. Well, how about this? I see our two guests are quite young. They might prefer snacks to tea tasting. Why not turn these two batches into tea cakes? The quality of each will be evident with a single taste. What do you think? Uh, old boy. Agreed. Well, do just that. Jin, listen up. Take these two batches of tea leaves and make them into two different tea cakes, one cake from each batch. Don't you dare even get a single leaf mixed up. Yes, sir, Uncle Lua. You want me to make them all into one cake? Oh, for, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the long wait. We've got both tea cakes here. Let's try them one at a time, shall we? Well, how's the taste? Well, the first one tasted a bit strange. I agree. <laughs> You're seriously gonna let me, the young lady. <laughs> oh God. Knock it off, man. I, the young lady, share many pies with you. The tea cakes made from the tea we had in stock tastes fine. Uh, all right, you win. So according to you, the tea processing machinery is fine. In other words, the problem is just with the tea itself. This new batch of tea, it's just not as good as before. So, the water and soil. But perhaps it's the cauldron that's the problem. It's old and in disrepair, which must have offended the adeptus, causing the tea to- Oh my god, I'm gonna slap this dude across the face. No, no, it's the soil and water. It's the elements that nourish the soil. The enough, enough. Let's get that technician in charge of the tea cauldron in here first. It's that Fontanian, the one from the Fontaine Research Institute. Hot, hot. What was it again? Ugh. Name's such a pain to pronounce. Jin, just go get her. Jin. Jin. <sighs> just wear that loafer. Give. Just wear that lazy loafer up, son. Do this time. That brain must know it. I'm gonna have them go to Yilong Wharf and search for our technician. Well, I'm actually an honorary senior researcher from the Fontaine Institute as well. Oh, uh -huh. I never imagined the young lady of the Fei Yun Commerce Guild would be so skilled. If that makes it easy, please, if you'd lend a hand. It's just an honorary title. Honorary. Oh, is that, is that so? Well, it still speaks to the abilities of the young lady. Even the honors of foreign nations are not beyond reach. So you see, honored guests, <laughs> I'm really sorry, but I need to trouble you to go to Yilong Wharf and find our technician, Miss Oat Moon Tan Yi. <laughs> what? It's like, it's more likely than not she's found herself a show that she can't tear her eyes off of. Well, how could you possibly dare to ask our guest to do such a thing? Old oh, Lord, you misunderstand me. Our honored guest already had business to attend at Yilong Wharf, and it would just be passing along a message on their way. It's nothing, really. Is that so? Is that so? It would seem to be so. I'm truly sorry. Then if you would, honored guests, Olu, I'll leave it to you to accompany them then. All right, let's go. Thanks for your hard work. You scared him so much he was jumping at his own shadow. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned earlier that if you're here to investigate the water and soil, right? 
Well, best you head over to the Yilong Wharf then. It is not far from the headwaters and there are ruins left by the Adepti along the way. So if you're looking for clues, there's your best bet. As for passing a message to Oat Moon Tan Yi, well, please lend a hand, would ya? Good, give old Luo uh, some peace of mind so he doesn't worry himself to death. <laughs> this is a trifling matter for the young lady. What the fuck? Why are you still acting? The show's over. And what's with Mini Pie? Anyway, just, you know, leave it to us. You can rest easy. Such great kids you are. Really great kids. Oh, right. I just noticed that you two really enjoyed the tea cake. Why don't I teach you the recipe? Next time you come by for some quality tea leaves, you should be able to make it for yourselves. In any case, safe travels. And uh, be careful on the mountain pass. And mind, you don't slip. Eat my ass! Sorry. Hold on, I'm celebrating. Give me a second. Leaf check. Oh, look, it's a fish. A golden carp. So, quite similar to the adeptal energy that the adept granted us, don't you think? Y yeah. There we go. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Donley. Nice. Fujin. Hey! Welcome back. Lynette, Paimon, you two are indeed brilliant. Upon seeing my dissipated adeptal energy, you immediately understood the situation. Of course, we're super duper experienced. We're super duper experienced adventurers, you know. Still, why didn't you say anything sooner? Network error. What do you mean? Error code 4206. 
Uh... Huh. Do I need to get off my Cloudflare service? I don't want to get rid of my Cloudflare service, though. What? It, it gives me the most stable internet. Uh, hold on. Okay. This should work now. Is it work? Yes. Nice. Okay. We're super duper experienced adventurers, you know. Still, why didn't you say anything sooner? You didn't just forget, did you? Uh... About that, should not the path idiot to have died be full of challenges? Tis merely a test of your wisdom. Well, it was you who brought us here. Speaking of which, just what's the problem with the soil and water you mentioned before? Grandpa was also sure that this was behind the deter deteriorating quality of the tea leaves. Yes, you too have seen Chaoying Village. Should the quality and quantity of tea leaves continue to decline, so will the village, until finally, in the years to come, it degenerates back into what it was millennia before. A desolate mountain forest. Uh, are you sure that isn't hyperbole? <laughs> well, it is true. The Lord of Geo would not stand idly by as disaster befell. Were the sky to collapse, the conqueror of demons and other adepti would do their utmost to support it. Should the waters under the wharf reach the decks and flood, the area harbor would aid the villagers. But, well, without tea... The stretch of the mountains would, or at least in Chai Ying Village's case, would lose its very reason to exist in human eyes. Well, that makes sense. When you put it like that, Paimon does understand. So, are you two willing to help me correct the imbalance of the water and soil? What do you say, Mini Pie? Who the fuck is Mini Pie? Never heard the name before. <laughs> but Pamela wants to help the desert Fujian in Chaoying Village, so when she thinks about such delicious tea cakes being lost forever just because there's no good tea, it'd be a big shame, wouldn't it? Well, yes, that's excellent. <clears throat> Your willingness is commendable, and one is quite grateful to you both. Now, back to business. When it comes to how to resolve the disharmony in the soil and water, one is indeed well aware of what to do. First, you two must go up against the currents and seek the jade treasures thrown into the waters. In the end, we must perform the ancient rain jade rite once more, dispelling the miasma that has settled over the mountains and fields into the rivers, and restoring the water veins and soil. Okay, got it. But, uh, just how do we do the ritual? Uh, that is Fujin. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. As for the ritual, it's still a bit early for that. Well then, we'll just see each other later. Bye! And she's gone. And it's gone. According to her, we need to go against the current. That just means upstream, right? Well, I mean, that's the same direction as Yulong Wharf. Well, let's go. Oh. I'll beat the shit out of you. Oh, Oi. I knew you were here. Oh, hey, look at that. I got a bow too. Alright, what's this mess? Oh. Okay, I already got this. I see something underneath my 
Oh. There's literally a little thing in there. Guess we'll find out later. Okay. I'm just gonna. Yeah. Well, here we are, Elon Wharf. Let's have a little stroll. Well, oh, look at that. Oh, there's the Fontaine person. Though I don't understand it in the least, I still think it's amazing. Just watching her stand there singing, or sing while walking around, or sing while sitting, then sing while she lifts her hand and then slowly lets it fall, all while the while ceaselessly singing. I really don't know just what kind of magical powers the old lady has. Bambling, chanting, singing and reciting, reciting and crying, I haven't got a clue what she's saying, but it's amazing. Little Mao, you can understand? <laughs> That's just how singing, opera singing is. And weren't there fight scenes later? There was this old dude who could do 88 flips and tricks, riveting stuff. Yeah, it's great. It's just a shame that I don't understand a thing. A whole bunch of people fighting and jumping all over the place, all super flashy and such. One on one, several all fighting all together, five or six taking turns, it's almost addictive. Hello, we're looking for our technician from Fontaine. Chief Luo and Grandpa Lu said, uh, what name did they give us again? Oat Moon Tan Yi. <laughs> oh my god, it's actually. Oh! Sounds like Grandpa Lou sent you, alright. Just call me. What the fuck? I thought I was Mond. Monty, you know, from Rainbow Six. Uh, pronunciation. Oh, it's High Mountain. Haute Montagne. Haute Montagne. Oh. <laughs> oh, they just spelled it out and they just said Haute Mountain Yi. Oh. oh, I get it now. Haute Montagne. I'm just going to say Montagne. Or Oat. I'm going to say Oat to save my sanity, because I'm not... I'm not... I'm not French. Uh, haha, <laughs> I'm the young lady of the... Okay. Uh... What? I'll have you know that I'm an honorary senior researcher. Seriously, is this a really the moment to be comparing? Anyway, she's Lynette with two ends and Paimon is mini pie. It was Grandpa Lou who sent us looking for you. <laughs> so your colleagues from the Institute. Excellent. It looks like you guys couldn't, couldn't stand the hopeless wreck of an organization either. Oh shit! She really hates that shit. Miss Lynette with two N's and Miss Minnie Pie, hello. I'm Little Mao, a friend of mountains. <laughs> yes, that's what my name means. Uh, Otmantenye can be a bit hard to pronounce, so I just asked Little Mao to call me that. Really? Quite the interesting pair. How did you two meet? It was quite fortuitous. Last year, I went to the mountains in the south for a spell and got lost in a fog. A huge beast the size of a... Cal Itumloa... What? I'm gonna call the CEL was glaring at me, and I thought I was done for, but just then, a little kid suddenly shouted at me. I followed the sound through the mist and got out and was saved. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been, well, eaten, just like that, and my family and Fontaine wouldn't have even been able to claim compensation on my account. <laughs> I know more about what goes on in the mountains than the grown-ups. Is that so? You're amazing, little mouth. Um, 
Well, Oat, Grandpa Lou and Lua are looking for you. All right, well, got it. I'll be there, Jiffy. All the shows here are just too good. I ended up watching several, right, one one right after the other, and now my legs are falling, falling asleep. But I just can't understand a word. What sort of stories are they telling? It's about how way back when, a huge carp and a monster from the mountains fought. A you-kill-me-I-kill-you story. In the end, everyone dies! <laughs> uh oh, that's a pretty concise summary. But don't talk about killing and dying so much, little mouth. If you think about that kind of stuff too often, you might become the villain when you grow up. Since those in Chaoying Village are waiting on me, it's time to go. I'll see y'all later. Let's go watch the shows here again when you're about to head back to Fontaine. Okay, now we solved the puzzle. Okay, uh, we can get back to business. Little Mal, how about you? Well, what are you two gonna do? Hmm, well, to be honest, we're not quite sure how to explain it. The water and soil in Chenyu Vale are kind of out of whack, and we need to cure them for everything in Chenyu Vale to get better. Well, I get it. Miss Paimon is trying to say that we need to restore nature. Oh, hey, that's right. You're really, really amazing, little Mao. You got it right away. Restoring nature, you say? Did someone talk to you about that? That's right. Our friend who is always taking care of me told me she wants to restore nature as well. If we restore nature, everything will get better, and I want to help as well. She also told me about you two. It's got to be Fujin. Oh, so you've seen her too? Huh? You my friend? Of course. Silly Miss Paimon, how could we have been friends if I've never seen her? Fair point. That makes things easier, actually. Actually, you want to... Paimon remembers that we need to find the jade treasures in the water, and then do some rain jade right. But even though we've come upstream, we still haven't found any clues. Oh, I know, I know. Come with me. I'll show you where, where to look. What? Is it really that easy? Little Mal, your friend wants to restore nature, right? Yeah, she told me a lot, such as stories from before Chowing Village became Chowing Village, and how the tea trees came to be, and more. She said that things will get worse and worse if uh, Chen Yu Veil if, uh, if natural order isn't restored. Oh, then looks like we're on the same page then. Little Mount, you just said you knew where we could find leads, right? Yeah, I don't know if it'll help, but it, when you mentioned jade treasures and rain jade and stuff, I just thought of it. Come with me. Let's go. Oh my god, we diving? Oh, it's just a cliff, okay. <laughs> Give me the tea. Here, over here. That it? Whoa, slow down. Watch your step. There's moss on the cliff. It's slippery. I'm in an orb. You're the one who needs to be careful. I can fly after all. Here we are. There's a cavern behind this waterfall. Try not to get soaked. You might catch a cold. Hey, <laughs> it's blocked off. Uh, how about you give that Adepto Energy a go, Ah, <laughs> uh, now this will be called Adventure Experience. Yeah, you're amazing, Miss Lynette. There's more in water. There's more water in here than before. Maybe I'll have to swim next time. Jeez, this kid's just going everywhere. It's a fucking mountain kid. What huge claw marks and paw prints? Like some huge wild beast left them behind. Yeah, huge, right? The dude is really enthusiastic about this. What is this? This is my secret base. You still camp here? You're incredible. You need to stay safe, man. Okay. It's fine. My friend will protect me. 
是云游四方的妙趣之一。Yeah, that's all you should. Okay. This is it. It's the clue that I wanted to show you before, right here. What on Tavat is that? It's so covered in moss that Paimon can't even make heads or tails of it. Yeah, this wasn't any moss last time I came here. No need to worry, little mouth. It's so humid in here that it's no wonder there's moss growing everywhere. There's got to be a way to clear it. We burn it. The moss came loose. Oh, it's just used adeptal energy. Look, Lynette, look. It's the scene of the ancient people attending a festival and performing a ritual. Pretty different from the festivals we have today, huh? Although the grown-ups in the city and the village all say that the Lord of Geo was the first to arrive in Chenyu Vale, I've heard that the people in the picture actually got here even earlier than he did. People back then used to throw bits of magic jade into the river and they'd float along until they sank to the bottom. They saw it as a way to guarantee good weather, prevent the river from flooding, and ensure that the soil would be fertile. Based on what we previously discussed, I'm guessing that Chenyu Vale will only be fixed after we found some jade that was thrown into the river in ancient times. That makes sense, doesn't it? Wow, you're so knowledgeable. Was your friend also the one who told you these stories? You rule, little Mao. That's first class guide material right there. <laughs> little Mao's a local, so of course he understands this place better than Paimon. Yep, and everyone will be really blessed and live heavily ever after and all that. <laughs> but I much prefer hearing her stories about ancient wars and battles. She told me that the warriors back then were all giants who were over 10 feet tall. The warriors of Chenyu Vale were covered in tattoos, and they had these massive jade axes that would chop a person in half in a big, oh my god. And the Millileth, led by none other than the Lord of Geo himself, were even tougher. They clad themselves in suits of armor that weighed over a thousand pounds and fought with hundred pound spears. Apparently, everyone was at war back then, so much that the Bishrei River turned crimson red. Later on, the mountains to the south became full of ghosts from that era. Even now, those who wander through the mountains might still be able to catch their singing on the wind. Uh, uh. Yikes, scary stuff? Cover your ears, Minnie Pie. Who's Minnie Pie? Mountain's right, though. If you constantly think about this stuff, you'll turn into a villain when you're older. <laughs> There's no way grown-ups would tell us these stories. They always say, like, we're too young to hear them, and they turn us rotten and stuff like that. But I'm not old enough. I'm already old enough. Hearing a story is not going to turn me into a monster. Besides, there aren't many adults who still who there's not many adults still around who know these stories anyway. If my friend hadn't told me, I wouldn't have even known the stories without this picture. Okay, fine then. Guess we'll move on. So the grown ups were right to say that these ancient people threw the jade into the river from somewhere high up. But where exactly? And where did all the jade float off to? Uh well, it must have sunk to the bottom, right? Well, it's not that simple. If it was thrown in somewhere upriver, then even if it sank to the bottom, it would still be pushed downriver by the current, let alone after so many years. Besides, I've never heard anyone talk of ancient ritual jade being found upriver. Chenyu Vale is a small place, after all. If there are any, if there had been such rumors, everyone would have already known about them. <laughs> you know so much. You're a future scholar material for sure. <laughs> but what if I don't want to be a scholar? They don't earn much more, and it sounds like no fun. Then become a traveler, just like us. What could be more fun than adventuring around the world? Well, seeing as we know now the site of the rain, rain jade right, what should we do next? Why don't we go somewhere high up to take a look? Hmm. High up. The watchtower in Yulong Wharf is pretty high up. Let me take a look in the ground before. There's a little turtle down here. It's just a random turtle in here. <laughs> Sorry, dude. But hey, it's like taking a barnacle off your back, right? <laughs> oh, 
Honestly, the game looks all right. I think I I think it was the right call streaming in 1080p60. Shall we go? I. All right then. Look, from up here you can clearly see how the water moves faster through these narrows and then slows down again as the river widens out. The jade must have stopped there. We should look we should find what we're looking for there. Wow, you're such a real whiz kid. Paimon's been wondering though, what's with that massive thing at the distance? A huge thing is the jade mouth, a legendary jade ring that an adeptus threw into the water. Uh, oh, but the river curves around there, so the current should actually speed up. But the river gradually gets wider there. Yeah, so the rapid flow around the bend might have resulted in things being deposited along the convex bank where it widens. So there's actually a good chance that the jade is at the bottom of the river somewhere around Jade Mouth. Of course, that's assuming where the course of the river hasn't been artificially altered. Not to mention, there's a fisherman's legend that goes something like, Jade shall rise from sunken mouth, or something like that. Anyway, let's go over there and take a look around first. You know, compared to Little Mal, Paimon feels like she's completely out of her depth. <laughs> it's because my friend is amazing. She knows everything there is to know about mountains, and she taught me loads too. That's how I've learned so much. Uh... Sorry, Paimon. You just need better friends. <laughs> you are unfit for duty, Mini Pie. As a young lady, I am most disappointed. Has the rarefied mountain air or miasma gone to your head or something, or does the adeptal energy you use have side effects? Power back. Where's my my mic on? Yep. Okay. Cool. Whatever the case, let's go down and get on a bamboo raft. Oh, oh yeah, Jade Mouth. Here we go. Take us a jade mouth. 
All right, Jade Mouth it is. The other two, your tourists? Well, if you're here for sightseeing, there's not many locals who head that way. You could say that. Mr. Boatman, are there any stories about Jade Mouth that I haven't heard before? Knowing you know how much you love your stories, kiddo, you must have heard them all by now. Tell me more. Tell me more. All right, then. Well, I've heard that mentioned through that Jade Mouth was left behind by Rex Lapis when he marched through here to save the people of Trinity Vale. Legend has it that to prevent a naval advance from downstream, the local Adepti... <sighs> You're making it up as you go again, Gramps. There's no way that Lear's navy came up this river. I heard that the Jade Mouth was formed by a piece of jade left by a giant carp. In those days, a baddie god tried to redirect the river down to drown the middle left station up both on the banks of Chen Yu Vale. But a white giant snake and a giant carp who were her subordinates disobeyed her orders. The giant white snake held up the baddie god while the giant carp she threw jade so she wore it here. The jades pinned the river down and ever since she, we had no more floods and everyone can live peaceful lives on both sides of the river. <laughs> you might understand a lot, kid, but you haven't seen much. Take a closer look. There aren't any crops by this river. See, after it was pinned down by the jades, it was true that the river hasn't flooded, but that's also meant that it has been able to provide irrigation for crops. So what was once a wide, gently flowing river is today a narrow, rapid flowing torrent instead. Such a river leaves no sustenance for the earth on its banks. <laughs> and of course, that also means no people living peaceful lives on either of its sides. Paimon gets it now. But did you say that the Adepti were resisting the Lord of Geo, little Mao? That's how it was, all that time ago. Some people believe that the first lord of, of all the year was Rex Lapis, but in Chen Yu Vale, we believe that before he came, there were other gods and Adepti who protected our ancestors. I've heard Grandpa Lu say that the tea ceremony was actually for Carp Adeptus who planted our first tea tree. Ooh, but aren't those Adepti meant to be the baddies? They were serving under a baddie god, after all. Well, in some stories, they're the baddies, while others are the goodies, but it was not It was all such a long time ago. Even the grown-ups don't remember much, so they always try to bluff me. <laughs> Talking about that friend of yours again? How could such supernatural beings be held to our simple clothes of right and wrong? As far as we're concerned, all the forces that have ever been blessed by this land deserve our offerings. Ah, there you go again. All right, then. Time to get off. We're here. Thanks, Gramps. As the river breeze blows, you hit... Oh. Let's see. What was the previous? It was, uh... As the river breeze blows, you hitch a ride on the rocking bamboo raft, and you slowly reach the jade mouth. And Paimon says... Oh, there's a piece of dialogue that's, that was skipped. So there's a... Okay. Look at that bamboo raft. I guess we've got a boat we can take now. Okay. We're here. This is to Jade Mouth. Okay, cool. Can I just sit on this? Oh, I can. I want to get a friend to sit on this. Anyway. Whoa, shit. Well, here's the jade mouth. But how are we going to find all the jade underwater? Ah, so that's how it is. The spring's cries ripple through the veils, the shrines depart from northeast shores. The heights and shallows in the southwest hide, the sun and earth from each other divide, the eternal whirlpool that never churns, the beautiful jade concealed within. What's that little mouse singing about? It sounds really complicated. It's one of our local folk songs. I heard an old granny singing it as she was gathering herbs. It means if you look out from the center of the river, two banks on either side, you see the two stone shrines hidden to the northeast and the west. Uh. These shrines keep the mighty whirlpool in the center suppressed. Oh, I understand the last bit. So the jade is all hidden beneath the whirlpool? Yep, so it looks like we're going to treasure hunting. Hooray! But the area between the northeast and southeast is so big. After all, in a broad sense, the northeast and southwest of Jade Mouth can include pretty much the entire world. Well, you're always thinking outside the box, Miss Paimon. But there's no need to worry. I already have an idea where the shrines will be. Well, because... Well, my friend told me. Come on, let's roll. Uh, hold up a sec. Does anyone else think that a giant maelstrom suddenly appearing here might not be too great? Oh. 
Yeah, won't that mean the boats will no longer be able to sail in and out of Yilong Wharf? Oh, don't worry about that. My friend told me that once we've done what we need to do beneath, the whirlpool will disappear completely. Otherwise, how will all the old boatmen carry on making a living? Wow, so it's not just a smart whirlpool, but a considerable one to boot. Let's get going, then. I'm pretty sure we know where to get there, because we just had... Yeah, there we go. I've, I've come here, but I didn't know what these were for. Okay. Let me just... Seems like they're all lit. Oh, there we go. So this one, we go from here. There we go. And then this one. Oh no, we need to go to that one. There we go. Simple. Very simple. Pine cone. And we just need to use a dental energy here. Well, I guess that settles it. Oh, it's a chest. Wow, you're amazing. Even my shrine couldn't do anything about this. Even my friend couldn't do anything about the shrines. You got that right. <sighs> hey man, you got the adepti. Alright. Multiple adepti. Let's bring out Xiao. Ting Zhao Er Lai. Is he built at all? Sort of. Not very well, but just enough for overworld stuff. Huh? Look at that. Is something glowing in between the pearls? Where? Y'all ready for this? <laughs> Here it oh my god, he ducked behind it. I, I missed. There we go. She showered. These mugs are regular pa heat packing Brunos. <laughs> wow, she's she really was right about you. You're pretty out of the ordinary. What do you think? What's this say? Someone's notes. The spring's cries ripple through the veils. The shrines depart from northeast shores. Oh, it's... We found the two shrines legends speak of, and it seems they, too, are related to our ancestors in the mountains. But the meaning of the folk song mentioned above remains unclear. We don't have a clue what to do here. We're just running around like headless chickens. Everyone got really worked up when they heard our comrades excavating and shipping antiques already made big mora. Who knows how much longer we'll have to stick around here. Hmm... Come on, have a look. All the pearls are lit up. Oh, 
though, so they have. Huh, we haven't seen the whirlpool from the song yet. What should we do next? How about giving the Adepto energy of yours a try, Lynette? You know, we might be able to call the whirlpool forth if we try using the Adepto energy. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh shit. Quick, look, the whirlpools appear, just like the song said. Oh, that's so fucking cool. <laughs> Down we go. A golden carp? Huh, it's you again, Adeptus Fuji. Fuji? Just... Ah, oh, fuck, I can't. Whatever. Sorry about that. I just realized you <laughs> there was someone in chat. You are the first. Indeed, you are. Uh, hello. Uh, I do not understand a lot of Spanish, but I can tell that you said you're from Argentina. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just one shotting the thing I put off for a little while. Uh, I wanted to play this for a while, but I just kind of put it off for now. Seems like right now we just managed to get through into the whirlpool, as you can see up there. So. Okay. Oh, you feng ya. I'll speak English for you. <laughs> no worries, man. Uh, I'm personally just reciting everything because I did the same thing for the whole Narcissus Cruise Ordo thing back in Fontaine. Because the these are not voiced by anything, so it's just text. So I figured I might as well just narrate everything because I enjoy kind of making it more immersive for myself. Now, apologies in advance. My internet is not very good so sometimes if the screen becomes super blurry that just means my internet just shit the bed um but yeah i hope you uh <laughs> hope you enjoy your stay i'm just kind of streaming because i like to document genshin stuff let and paimon we meet again and who might this be you haven't met before this is little mao he helped us so much along the way no, we haven't met before, but you must be a good child, little Mao. Hello, and yes, that's me. Miss, are, are you an Adeptus? You are, aren't you? This is Adeptus Fujin. Thanks for all the help you've given Lynette and Paimon, little Mao. It's really the legendary Fujin in the flesh. I can't believe this. I've heard so many stories about you, and, and, and now I know you're not some kind of big, slippery carp, but a lady instead, like a big sister. Big carp? What kind of odd stories have you been listening to, little Mao? <clears throat> one is indeed an adeptus and as such can take forms as one pleases this particular form seemed to be the most approachable one for well conversing with humans F from what you've said you have a very unique scent little mao have you met someone in the mountains before someone with red eyes and a fair complexion perhaps uh not exactly Big Sis Fujin, you're not talking about one of your other friends, are you? My friend from the mountains doesn't sparkle like you do, but she's also really cool. She taught me tons and taught me, or helped me tons and well, taught me loads. So it was her after all. So your friend wasn't Adeptus Fujin after all, huh? But Big Sis Fujin's my friend now too. 
isn't she? Of course, little Mao. I'm delighted to have made friends with you. Little Mao's met other adepti? As for whether little Mao's friend counts as an adeptus or not, I'm not quite sure myself. After all, adeptus is merely a title, and it's hard to say whether adepti are even people. The word adeptus is just like any other word, such as hero, villain, or idiot. No one is born an adeptus, and no one shall remain an adeptus forever. That is true. So you've met that friend of little Mao's that we were talking about, right? Indeed, but it is long, long time since I last saw her. So now I suspect that I don't even know what her half as well as little Mao does. I'm not even sure if I still count her as a friend. So according to what he, little, what he said, his friend wants to restore nature as well. I would imagine so. Anyway, I must ask you all to please take care of this votive rain jade. I had originally hoped it might remain here, the same as it ever was, but I never expected it to grow quite so large. <sighs> I used to love it so. This rain jade that you mentioned, does it rain down or make it rain or something? Well, of course not. After the great changes in our geology, our the ancestors of the people of Chunyu Vale lost their ability to communicate with the heavens and lost the guidance of emissaries whose beauty was pure as moonlight. Henceforth, they began to take jade, which glowed as gently as the light of the moon, and cast it into the river. As they did this, they would pray for good omens for fertile land, for clement weather, and for the riverbanks to hold strong. Over time, these rituals grew in power until one day, one day. Bixi's Fujin, what happened next? One day, the long war to become the gods who would reign over this world began. Afterward, this tradition lost all of its meaning. But though it was forgotten, its name is still passed down over generations. To cut a long story short, this piece of votive rain jade before us was the very last one ever to be thrown. Just as the part above the surface, when commanded by an adeptal art, can be made large enough to stop a flood, its core, too, has been swollen by uncontrolled adeptal energy. Much of its power has dissipated into the surrounding area through spirit veins. This power may also have affected the nearby flora and fauna, attracting and even making aberrations of them. You must be careful. What? As far as I can tell, the additional energy that has dissipated nearby should be sufficient to reawaken the hibernating votive rain jade. If this is the case, we're one step closer to achieving our goal of nursing the water and soil back to health. <clears throat> um, how should I say this? Paimon and Lynette, thank you both. You're doing an amazing thing by choosing to help me, you know. And little Mao, will you help me too? Will you help out your big sis? Of course, I want to restore nature. Is that so? Well, that's good. You're very smart, little Mao. You'll understand everything later. All right, well then, let us go our separate ways for now. Once you've retrieved the adeptal energy-filled votive rain jade, we will meet again by a deep pool shrouded in cloud and mist to the south. The south. Got it. Uh, she's gone and disappeared again. <sighs> oh, well. Let's just do what Big Sis Fujin said and restore this voting rain jade's power. Speaking of which, what's it got to do with voting? Uh, see, you're not much better than Paimon. <laughs> It's votive. Oh, right. It's so complicated. Although, since you mentioned it, what does votive even mean? And 
Why is it called Rain Jade again? Exactly. What does it mean? <laughs> Let's follow the Adeptus instructions and do the whole thing with Adeptal Energy. Okay, well. It seems simple enough. I kind of want to get up there. Oh. There's some... There's hillage shells over here. Make sure there's no treasure that leaves me. Okay. This snipe is still. Whoa! Holy shit, that scared me. <laughs> Whoa, this is. Oh, oh, that's kind of cool. Wait, so I can just like constantly get the artifacts out? Okay. Oh, shit. That's cool. <laughs> All right. I see a little thing here. Was there anything here? No. Eh, I'm totally drenched. Oh, it's gone. Oh, shit. Oh, he's taking me. A boar created by Adepto Power. Adeptal energy could turn to a forest floor. So what did Vincius Fuji mean by aberrations? There's your answer right there, dude. Cool. Here it comes. Even more sealies here. That's pretty cool. There's there's even more sealies. Huh. There's three sealies. Miss Paimon, do you often get to play with sealies? 
play together, yeah. I'm gonna follow these guys. One's gotta be here, right? Yep. Nice. Sure. Uh, uh, wait, why is Paimon being all reluctant and shit? What? I love Amber, dude. <laughs> That's finally over. Can I even dive in there? No, it's not Fontaine. Okay. It looks completely different now. It looks awesome. Oh my god. I didn't even look at that thing. Yo. That's pretty sick. It seems like the jade's starting to move. That's right. But according to the story, the riverbed should have lots of other votive rain jades. Why does Big Seas Fujin only want this one? Look, it's shining. Almost as if it's resonating with the electrical energy on you. Why don't we try using that power, eh? It suddenly became small. Ooh. That is cool. Yeah, Paimon didn't think it just changed size like that. Guess that's a millennia old treasure for you. It's just like you said, little mouth. They could be as tall as the clouds or small enough to hide amidst pool and leaf. Yeah, well, looks like the votive rain jade's in our hands now. You're so reliable, Lynette. Hey, Paimon worked hard too. Miss Paimon's amazing, so you're gonna take us to that deep pool shrouded in cloud and mist to the south now, right? Clouds and mist. Hmm. I th think Trinity Vale does actually have places like that. But where? Tell us, little guide, and Paimon will take you there. Do you remember that place Mountain mentioned, the spot where we met? That place is super foggy, and I know all the secret cavern that leads there. Even the other locals don't even know about it. It was my friend who showed me the way, and since you're my friend too, Paimon, I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> Your friend of the mountains, are they connected to Adeptus Fujin? Well, she told me lots of stories, and quite a few of them were actually about Big Sis Fujin. Well, any friend of yours is a friend of ours too. In fact, Paimon hopes we'll meet her on the way. Shall we go? Paimon's going to take you all to the uh, place you mentioned, little mouth. Give me a moment, let me see if there's any treasure chest I haven't found yet. Seriously? There's no help on you. Hang on a moment, okay, little mouth? Okay, the cavern's pretty dark, so you gotta be careful. Jade or Jade Cabin, I wish. Hmm. Oh, there is some stuff up here. I didn't even see this. Yes, sir. It's another messenger bell. Alright. Anything in here? Seems good. Can I smack it? No, I can't. Okay. Well, let's go. Oh, back up top.
无聊。这里。Let's be off, fellow spelunkers. Mou won't be because of the rain. Just rest. We're going. I've been here before. Why did Little Mount disappear when we weren't looking? Did he run up ahead of us? There's lots of monsters around here. Let's go up and take a look. Hey! Lynette and Paimon. Uh, look up behind you, Mal. Whoa, that's a huge monster. Wait, your friend, you say? That's right. I told you before that I had lots of friends, didn't I? Well, I just happened to meet her, and so I got a hold of her to introduce to you. Uh... Hello? I'm Lynette, and this is Paimon. Uh, she's afraid of strangers. I usually call her Bluey, because I don't really know her name. Oh, and don't worry about that. Lena and Paimon are great people. They've been accompanying me on my adventures. They're real experts in the mountains and forests, too. I know. I've seen. Answer me this one thing. Where did you gain the power to suppress nature? Suppress nature? What do you mean? Plants pursue the sunlight and fertile soil, creating fruit fit for the birds and beasts to consume. The digested seeds are scattered, and those which consume seed and fruit become bait for predators. Thus does everything return to the land. The snake hidden in the branches, the fish in the mountains, and the beasts of the forest. Traveling in the realm of nature is wonderful, so why have you come? Oh, come on, Bluey. You don't have to be so fierce. You raised two questions. Uh, my Adeptal energy comes from Adeptus Fujin, and our goal is to nurse the soil and water in Chenyu Vale. Exactly. Something's off about Chenyu Vale's natural conditions, so Adeptus Fujin enlisted our help. If we don't, well, the tea leaves in Chaoying Village are going to turn out worse and worse, and the village itself might decline. That's why she wanted us to perform the Rain Jade Rite, which will restore the area. The Rain Jade Rite. I see. You have also answered two of my questions. You may ask me two also. Why do we have to do that? Give and take. It is only natural. You have one more question. <laughs> Paimon, shut the fuck up. Oh, wait, that one counted? Uh, whatever. Do you know Adeptus Fujin? Well, of course they know. Is that the same as nursing the water and soil? Not the same. <laughs> it isn't? What were you talking about? That's right, what do you mean not the same? The new tea leaves taste better. More like before. It hit. Whoa, and just like that, she's gone. Don't worry about it, Paimon, she's like that. Sometimes when I'm not looking, she'll just vanish into the shadow of the trees, and then at others, the sun might dazzle me, or the birds might call over her head, and well, there she is. In any case, guess we're all friends now? Well, let's hope so. Uh, don't worry about it, Lynette. Bluey's not really big on politeness, but she's always been like that. Yeah, your friend's pretty strange, little Mal. Well, is she? Well, for all you know, you're the one that might stream, seem strange to others. I mean, not only can you use a dental energy to make the moss disappear, but you can make golden stone things appear and vanish, and even turn into a carp and fly around, just like in the stories. Well, you got a point. That said, Paimon couldn't have imagined that the friend you spoke was about, well... Monster seems a bit rude. 
and the thing might be pretty offensive. That's right, your friend's so blue. No wonder you call her Bluey. What? I don't know why I never told anyone. If the adults knew that we were friends, they might lock me up. Wait, really? You'd actually go to prison? No, 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 nothing like that. They just wouldn't let me out, make me wash my face, and force me to read my books. I wouldn't get to play in the mountains anymore. And that's why I've never told anyone. But you're my friend, so it's fine. Anyway, come with me. This is an awesome place I want to show you. Oh, I've been here. I just didn't open this chest. What's up, bros? I've been here. I think maybe I solved the puzzle too early. So I'm just gonna go over here. Look at this. This is what I wanted to show you by going this way. Ooh, didn't think there'd be one here. You'd be you're amazing, little Mao. Huh. Looks like that squeed moss all over this place too. Come on, use your gentle powers again. You're awesome. You pushed the moss back up just like that. Like what you did with that smoky cloud. Still, that wasn't there yesterday. Is this what they call nature? Don't worry about it. Moss or hillet shells just live on a limit. Little Mal, what's this picture about? Originally, I didn't know either, but I figured out today that after being hearing Big Sis's, Big Sis Fujin's theory, this must have been the stuff that happened before the mural on Mount Limung was made. See this? Long, long ago, people were able to talk to the gods and adepti in the skies by talking to that big piece of jade in the middle. The emissary of the god would lead them and protect them. See, that's gotta be the shiny golden person in the middle. I bet that was a super amazing person. But later, just like Big Sis Fujin said, something changed and the people of Chen Yu Vale lost their guiding emissary, and they couldn't talk to the heavens any longer, and that's how the rain jade right came about. Huh. Your story does make sense. Well, thanks. What do you think, Lynette? That's a distinct possibility. Come to think of it, our ancestors were pretty amazing themselves, huh? The jades that they left to us still have the power to restore nature. For something this old to be so strong, the past must have been a sweller time than the present, right? Well, that's not true. The world marches onward. Leaving the accustomed detritus in the past in its wake. Huh. That's a really cool thought. I never thought of it that way. Hehe, <laughs> I thinks that you're the amazing one, little Mao. We've seen lots of ancient objects, puzzles, mysterious powers, and monsters in our time, but Paimon's never really considered this stuff before. Well, well, 
You know what? Not really thinking about this stuff is at all is pretty awesome too, really. I bet you'll like be like my big sister when you grow up, have, just having fun adventuring anywhere, everywhere. Uh -huh. Oh, so you got a big sister then. Well, we're not blood related, but she worked here in Trinity Vale after a while. She'd go up in the mountains and run around the rivers, and I'd follow her. We discovered this little cave together. She said that this little kid was my... Little cave is my Rubicon? I'm not sure what that means. However, she must have written to me in a long time. If I were to guess, she's off adventuring in some faraway place. Maybe in the ancient city of Wise, or something like that. This big sis of yours seems like an interesting person. I know, right? Still, big sis Fuji needs our help, so let's continue on. Ah, so that's where you were. Ah, oh, I was so worried. Wow, a golden carp. <clears throat> one was quite concerned the swirling miasmas and fierce beasts at Rome might have caused you ill, but one sees that it is not so, and that is good. Thanks to the adeptal energy you possess, one has connected to the golden carp here, thus gaining the means to speak to you directly. Lynette, Paimon, Little Mal, please come with me. Okay. Oh, it's an actual physical object. Can I ride it? Oh, I can't. I'm going faster because I have double animal on. Wow, you're super amazing, Fujin. <laughs> of course I... <clears throat> anyway, before one, it's, you know, it's trivial. Nothing too interesting. Oh shit. Bro, what? My Donnie just fucking ate shit. What the fuck was that? Hmm. It was just up ahead. Well, I can see everything here. Oh yeah, I was here before. Wait, why is it, why am I revisiting this place? Oh, it's the it's the it's the islands here, right? Much time has passed since I last emerged here. This was once a lively place filled with the aroma of the incense. Then the three of us could travel freely across mountains and rivers. Yes, those days were like flowing water beneath the moon, dark yet sparkling, oh so brightly. Yeah, <laughs> but enough reminiscing. Thanks to you all, I am now able to return here and host the Range Aid Rite. Eh? Uh -huh. So you're that person in the mural? Oh, I get it now. That person standing on the mountain hugging that egg, that was you, wasn't it? Uh, an egg? Come now, little mouth, that was precious jade. Casting, ra casting rain jade was a ritual of great power. The votive rain jade can calm rivers, improve the weather, but it can also be a thing of death and slaughter. Only the thinnest line separates curses and adeptal energies that have aided you up till now, you know. That's why I must make sure that the right does not fall into the hands of those who would do ill. And that's why. <clears throat> uh, yes, that is correct. One was indeed the figure that hugged the egg in that mural. Huh. Bixie's Fujin, doesn't that make you, uh, ancient? Dude! Nah, you just call her a fucking Obasan, dude. Yep, it does. Still, I like the name Big Sis. It makes me feel quite young. Well, being called Adeptus is pretty alright, too. Well, being called Adeptus is pretty alright, too, right? Well, certainly. Even though the others of me title so, even though, uh, even though, even though others title me as such, I am aware that I am hardly the equal of true Adepti, like Mountain Shaper and the rest. I am, in truth, the weakest of my band of friends. I can't make medicines to save others, nor can I bound across the mountains and plains. And even so, I could not simply lay the title down. It would have done the people of Chen Yu Vale a disservice, I fear. Still, you may call me whatever you wish. After all, we have become friends, or so I would say. In any case, my days of being called an adeptus are now consigned to history, just like this place has been. Once the rain jade right was the day of great celebration where we would commemorate the year of abundance using laughter, firecracker battles, and beast dances to frighten the ill omens away. This must appear like naught but forgotten ruins of the modern mind. Well, I mean, not completely forgotten. 
That's right. People in Chaoying Village told us that the, it was the mighty Adeptus Fujin who had defeated the demons and planted the first tea tree. Back on the bamboo raft, Grandpa Lu was also mentioning that the offerings of tea were to a certain carp Adeptus. And wasn't there an opera sung at Yilong Wharf about the carp going around killing stuff? <laughs> you were so awesome in those stories, Big Sis Fujin. Also, people still do the Wusho dance, you know. You said it yourself. The definition of the Adeptus is... And putting definitions aside, you're our friend, Fujin. You shouldn't be constantly fretting about the right and stuff. He should live happily, like we're companions on an adventure. That's right. We're on an adventure together. Right. Yes, you're right. Thank you. That was well said. Indeed, I was the one who asked you for all of our help. It wouldn't do at all if I just continued wallowing in the past now, wouldn't I? Well, in any case, I need your help to prepare for the ride itself. In any case, have you encountered any sacred simulacra in your adventures? These were ritual spirits often used by people in ancient times to protect their homes. There should be some nearby. Lynette, Paimon, Little Mal, please help me put the simulacra in the proper places, and that way we can restore the spirit veins to using the jade, uh, rain jade ride. Leave it to us. I will. I have faith in you. I did this like three weeks ago. Oh, I canceled all the dialogue because I finished it weeks ago. All right, Fujin, we're good. <laughs> the Seiko Samulaka already. Thank you both. The votive rain jade has returned to its priests, and the statue has come back to the rightful places. The rain jade rite is now ready to be performed. But will Chun Yu Veil really recover once you cast a rain jade in? That's right. Things will get better for us, little Mao. Nature, jade, humans, all is divinely dictated. The changes in the land and water in Chun Yu Veil, the malicious fog in the spirit veins, they are all essentially a sign of the earth moving against the flow of time. Yeah. Huh. So that miasma-like thing is a manifestation of environmental disorder? Eh, that's right. You can think of it as, like, turn your veil's attempt to... How to put it? Return to nature? And what we intend to do here is to treat the land and soil and rid of its sickness. Return to nature. After all, before humans left their caves and mountains to dominate the world and regulate nature, and before Chenyu Vale and Bisrei River got these names, the land, mountains, and rivers had their own order. <laughs> Even I sometimes miss the cool mountain streams and the great rivers that would ebb and flow with the seasons. I mean, I was a mere fish that swan swam. But if we let nature seize control of its order once more, the people of Chenyu Vale will suffer and languish. I hope you can understand. Yeah. In that case... Did it work? That thing in the fog just now. <sighs> Seemed too feeble in my current state. Eh, we've got the votive rain jade and we placed the simulacra, but it still wasn't enough. I'm very sorry. It's not your fault. I need more power to overcome this trial. Just the adeptal energy in the votive rain jade has dissipated into the spirit veins. So has my power also left me across the long years. What? Will you really grow big just like the jade? Uh, probably not. <laughs> Just think about it, though. Super Adeptus Fujin, now three times the size. Well, is there any way we can restore your power? The Golden Carp. Ah, you are wise indeed. Before you found the few Golden Carp, I could not muster the strength to appear. Initially, I thought we just needed to gather all the ritual implements and that would make up for the deficiency of my power. I was not entirely open with you before, but neither the present nor past me was anywhere near a match for the Adepti of the South. I uh, feared you would consider me weak and unworthy of your help. Gee, oh, is that it? Paimon thought you would have something more important to say. Huh? There's no way we'd abandon not or not make friends with you just because of that shit. That you, you are my friend has nothing to do with your status as an adeptus. Other than the whole young lady bit, Paimon wanted to say the same thing. My friend told me lots of stories about you. In my mind, even though we've just met, we're already friends, and I want you to be happy, big sis. All right, all right. Thank you, all of you. Well, that's more like it. So where should we look for these golden carp? I believe that you will have to go to the Yao Di, Yao Di Valley. Yao Di Valley. There will be a cavern there with a golden carp hidden within.
I'm gonna beat the shit out of that fucking bluey bitch. Alright. Off we go. Oh yeah, there was even more miasma in here. Please, everyone, do enter. Eh? Is Fuji? Wait, 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 is this... Is this your abode? Well, I suppose you could consider the place that her lord and I made. <clears throat> Either way, I hope the sacred simulacra here will cause you little trouble. Herb lord. <laughs> is that what it's called? Bluey is herb lord? I hope not. Uh, I'm not good at small talk. Do you have anything you have to talk about? Uh, I'm the butler of this place and responsible for the management of the master's abode. <laughs> I mean, there's nowhere, there's nowhere else to put him, right? Or, oh, maybe there is. Put you up there. I've got it. I can talk about things with you. Uh, if you're going to enter the master's study, remember not to touch the stone slate. It's very, it's very important to master. So don't touch the stone slate. The branch she planted keeps growing. It seems the water and soil in the cave are quite nutritious. Maybe in a few years, once it grows a little bigger, the medicine jar will be too small for this young tree. She connected the door opening mechanism with the jar the branch is planted in breathing life giving a devil energy into said mechanism it seems like the jar containing the mechanism was damaged a long time ago i wonder if i, I can i wonder if the door can still open and close okay so don't oh I'm probably upset oh oh fujin's right there hey what's up fujin Oh, this one's been bashed in. Oh, God. We're here, Big Sis Fujin. Have you been waiting for us to be here the entire time? Eh, no, no. After leaving Carp's Rest, I can only appear in places in which my power remains, and only by the grace of your identical energy, Lynette. Wait a minute. Didn't the gap in the middle of that mural originally have something that went with the golden carp mural in it? I'm not sure. In truth, this is my first time seeing this mural as well. What? I'm sure you've all heard of these battles that took place in the past. Conria. Mm hmm? Sorry, I'm merely a minor adept of Trinity Vale. I fear I know little about any wars concerning this Conria. The Archon War? Yes, this cave was one of the shelters we built for the inhabitants of Chunyu Vale. Such as the innocents caught in the crossfire when the floods overturned the heavens and the earth's but open could have its place in safety. I didn't expect that they'd draw the mural here, though. I believe the ones depicted me to be, uh... I mean, the big slippery carp little Mao mentioned, and a friend. Huh. If that's the case, why did the most important part get taken somewhere else? That is true. Why is that? Perhaps the satisfaction. 
Three of us were once great friends, with two of us becoming worshipped as Adepti, and one of us was always the mountain's master. Later, Herblord and I defected together, and she most likely died as well. Or perhaps the one amongst us who fought the last, fought to the last, never submitted, and only heard news of us afterward. Perhaps to her we were all traitors, and with the depictions of myself and Herblord becoming an object for her to vent her fury against. Huh. Well, is that really the case? The painting outside looks like... Who knows? In any case, that's all in the past. So please lend me your strength in nursing Veil back to health. I can feel that there's another golden carp lingering where I used to. Near Mount Shenlian, I believe. Oh, so there's another. If we get that one, I should have enough to strength to perform the ritual. Speaking of that, though, I must apologize for being unable to control the golden carp even with you nearby. I know they might have given you some trouble swimming through the air like that. Eh, yeah, it's fine. I just think of my sealies. But really, where is the golden carp that should be here? Well, inside the painting. Just use your adept energy to awaken it, Lynette. Oh. According to what Fujin said, we should be able to use the adept energy to get the thing out. Huh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Fishy. Okay, cool. Uh, I have a feeling we're gonna have to fight the guy, so I'm gonna have to bring someone to cryo. Uh, I mean, Yulis here. Cool. Uh, I we go. My apologies for the poor hospitality. It's been a long time since I last enjoyed tea with others. Hopefully my brewing skills have not deteriorated too much over time. One, <clears throat> uh, I mean, I have some experience in appreciating tea. I was also thanks to that I was able to tell this year's tea offering smelled off. That's how I discovered the trouble with the soil and water quality. Huh. Looks like there wasn't some sort of mean this tradition. Ah, oh, I don't want to be mean. And I suppose I can tell you who fail and appreciate the value of tea and about its value with confidence. Have some tea, Lynette. I'm not sure why, but this reminds me of Madame Ping's. Yeah, there was that time in the year of when we fixed Madame Ping's teapot for her. You know, if you think about it, we seem to have some connection with tea. Madame Ping. Ah, oh, I think I know who you speak of. We were acquainted back in the day, along with her friends. As Little Mouse said, I was just a giant carp, unable to leave fresh water for too long, nor live in salty waters. As such, they sent me one of these teapots. That was how my friends would have been able to take me inside. My teapot, of course, to Gwaley Plains and uh, Lear Harbor to meet those lovely people they spoke of. Unfortunately, such a time never quite came. Um, Paimon, Lynette, you've been to Lear Harbor. Could you tell me more about the city? Well, I like to hear about it, too. I've never been. Well, Paimon would like to start from one mean restaurant. <sighs> How about I handle the explanation this time? Sure, but don't you dare skip over the eating bits. It's a port city built nestled against the mountains. You begin only for Fujin to interrupt you. She notes that she'd like to hear your, the year story. You understand, and begin again. When we arrived in Liyue Harbor... Paimon and I were just in time for the Rite of the Ascension. The child and adeptus before you listen to your words and Paimon's incessant interjections, leaning forward as you speak, exclaiming in shock and relaxing as the tension of the tale rises and falls. They also add their own commentary and questions about Liyue, such as the food and flavors available at restaurants, the toys that old lady sells, and gems and jewelry of Feiyun Slope and such. As you watch Fuji and Little Mao and Paimon be so moved by the tale. Along this journey went many friends. We met many friends and experienced so many things. It was... I can only hope that in the end it can only be worth it. Whoa, a sea monster, huh? Amazing. 
The year at Harbor is not what I imagined. Do you find it disappointing? Well, no, just different. And being different doesn't make it bad. I like the Lee Year Harbor you've described. It's good to hear that after all this time, our dear Herb Lord was able to find a home there. I think that's simply wonderful. What about you, little Mal? Could you tell me about you and your friend? I'm curious to know what she's like. Uh, sure. Well, Paimon and Lynette have already met her, so it wouldn't be fair if I didn't tell you. So this is how we met. At the time, I was still a little kid who didn't know anything about the mountains. It was nighttime, and some wild beasts were following me through the forest. It was super scary. Finally, I was chased to a clearing and surrounded by these beasties. For a while, I was convinced I was going to get eaten, but suddenly they were all backed off into the woods, and they were gone. When I looked back, there she was, looking at me. She was like Jade, but there was a dignity to her. I knew it then that she was the master of the mountain that my grandparents had told me about. I wasn't scared. I just told her... I finally found you. I've been looking for you for so long. I didn't know why, but she lowered her head and thought before walking off. She made no noise as she did so. I listened as hard as I could, but there were no sounds of anything stepping on branches or fallen leaves. And after that, I would sometimes catch sight of her, moving between trees in a flash. Sometimes the rising moonlight would outline her shadow as she stood atop a mountain. And at that time, I thought it was strange. Why hadn't I seen her before? She was always there, after all. I wanted to talk to her, but she would always turn and leave. It was only later that she became willing to talk to me. Much later on, she would take me up on very high mountains and into very deep forests. She asked me a lot of the questions in exchange, she told me lots of stories. In the beginning, Chao Ying Village was a nameless barren mountain, and the rivers had a real temper. Sometimes they'd flood, and sometimes they would, be, would all be wither. And on that barren mountain, she'd made two friends, a fish and a snake. But later, the snake was cut into pieces, and the fish sank into the sea, and only then Bluey was left. Thanks, little Mal. Also, um, please don't tell anyone about my friend, okay? Of course we won't. You seem quite familiar with this friend of little Mao's, Fujin. Indeed, but that was all my past life. Many, many years have passed since I could longer move freely. I suspect that I might not have recognized her any longer, though through little Mao's words, she might not have changed too much past life <laughs> well perhaps that's the most accurate way to the phrase it i did not utterly perish but i did lose my original form and my strength and wisdom dissipated along the spirit veins this is also why i invited you and lynette to carp's rest if we were not there i would not even have a form to show you or a voice in which to speak to you it's all thanks to you that i've been able to slowly regain my previous strength coming here and once more seeing these scenes with my own eyes meeting old friends from the past and most importantly making new friends I'm very glad. How'd you die? My memory to that had grown foggy. The herb lord and I were both servants of another god, and it was I that organized the rain jade rite, administering the rivers and mountains for our lord. As for the other, she was as she was. A beast, wild and free. In those peaceful days, I also climbed waterfalls to Mount Altsang and Mount Hulao, and there I met the Adepti, whose powers and wisdom far eclipsed mine. Of course, that was all before the war. Our lord was not a heinous beating by any means. Once upon a time, she made many dreams come true. If there was any evil, it was the Archon War itself. What happened next needs no further explanation on my part, I'm sure. Well, you talked about how you er and you and Herblord defected. Now, that's right. That might have been the bravest thing we've ever done. Our lord had all gone mad, seeking the position of a god who may rule this world, or perhaps even seeking survival. Either way, she lacked the power to overcome Morax. So in a final desperate gamble, she caused the Bishrei River to flood, hoping to destroy everything downstream. Of course, she knew that would mean for Chenyu Vale and its people. Oh, but Paimon thinks that that's something that she'd never ever do, period. Perhaps that's just what the war does to people. Either way, that was our final adventure as a trio of friends. So she was the one, along with the other one, to put the jade stuff down, huh? Ling Yuan attacked people with her familiars, here herding them to the shelter we had prepared. Herb Lord fought against our mistress while I climbed Mount Lingmeng and hurled the votive rain jade into the raising, rising waters. Of course, that wasn't a proper rain jade rite. It was simply the release of a depth of energy stored within the jade pendant to have the earth open its maw and swallow the rivers and allow the jade mouth to grow and stabilize with flow. What happened next? <laughs> well, didn't Little Mal tell you how it all ended? Yeah, that's right. Wait, really? When? Alright, that's enough about the past. We should get to the back to performing the ride itself. 
True, but what about the golden carp? Isn't that what we're looking for? In truth, you've already found it with the previous one. That's how I was able to appear before you. It was just I missed the scenery here a bit too much, so I couldn't help but have a long chat with you. After all, your sense of time and mine are of the same. You won't tarry long once your objectives are complete, will you? As such, I apologize. Please forgive my capriciousness. Ooh, so you were inside the teapot. What? Alright, back to here. Though my power is still a far cry from what it was in the past, thanks to your aid, I've regained much strength. Thank you. Next, we need to perform the ceremony. What effects will it have? It's been thousands of years since we last performed it, and the mountains, rivers, and spirit veins have all changed a great deal. But if all goes well, the volatile ranger will resolve the issue. Well then, let's begin. Fox dissipating. Whoa, what is that? Ooh. Huh. It's just like in the mural. Do you remember Paimon? The one with the two golden people and something in between them? Wow, you're really impressive, little Mal. I didn't remember that at all. Behold, the sacred mountain. In my era, the merely climate was already transgressed. But the ancestral inhabitants of this place are gone and the commuting path lies waste and broken. Who shall judge us now? That is where the spirit veins of Chenyu Vale converge. Through it, I can transmit my adeptal energy through the veil, restoring its water and its soil. We are only one step off from achieving our goal. Are you prepared, Lynette? Let's do it. Indeed. Trails of Lysheen. Damn. What a fucking sight. Look at that. I'm so glad I can put this in max settings. Accompany Fujin. Please come with me. Huh? Fujin, wait. Why'd you turn into a carp again? Well, this form makes movement easier. Do you not like it, Paimon? <sighs> she determines to restore nature. Sorry, who now? Let's get the re answer here. We Explanations can wait. Okay, hold on. Oh. <laughs> Tai bomb Eula, dude. Yeah. 
此乃天道。玉峰，云散。Oh, we're definitely gonna fight. Do I not need to clear that miasma first? I don't know. Go later. There's a house here, too. Oh, that's just Hillitrol stuff. Okay, never mind. I perceived it would be you, and I do miss you so, but really, this might be a bad time. Eh? Uh -huh. So Bluey's name is Ling Yuan? Don't be like that. Speak with me. The opportunity to speak will come, but it is not now. You know this. I know this, but I cannot allow it. Wait just a little while. Longer. It will end soon. I do not like the things up there, but it doesn't matter. Leave, just leave it to me, Fuji. Do not come up here. Lulu and Kaimin. Alright, bitch. Bring it on. Oh, we're gonna sh we're gonna have a showdown against the big bad. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. Hold on, let me get that thing real quick. I'm quite sorry for not being completely frank with you earlier. Though I became aware of it during our travels, I did not wish to believe that my old friend Ling Yun would be the source of the storm that buffets Chen Yu Vale. You know, I already had an inkling already. Yeah, you did. How'd you figure it out? She, Herb Lord, and I once defended Chen Yu Vale together. To think that she would do something so wicked, her disruption of the spirit veins that caused the miasma to propagate, and the one who stopped me from performing the right the first time was also her. But Big Sis Fujin, Bluey, I mean, Ling Yuan isn't a bad person. I know, Little Mao. She is your friend. But at this time, she is the greatest threat to Chen Yu Vale. If she controls the Sacred Mountain, she will wield the power to completely alter the land of Chen Yu Vale in the blink of an eye. I fear that Ling Yuan has already entered Qi Wang Terrace before us. She means to rewrite the flow of path of the spirit veins. We have little time left. Lynette. You have mastered the adeto energy available here in Junyu Vale. Ling Yuan and her familiars will not be your match. Please accompany me for this time, for a time, and aid me, for the sake of the people in Junyu Vale. I'll perform a ritual and open up the way to Qi Wang Terrace. Please stay by my side and protect me. You got a boss. Oh, I can be an archer. Fuck! 
固若金汤。玉峰，云散。你没有退路了。天理长驱。粉化。You listen to me. Will you not wait? Your strength is feeble. You cannot match me. But do not worry. You will soon recover. Lingyuan, say no more. Lynette and I will stop you. We will stop his plan to destroy Chunyu Vale. The ritual is complete. The gate to Chiwang Terrace is now open. The world seems to spin for a moment, and when you open your eyes once more, you are already above the clouds. When the Lingyuan changes direction, the spirit veins miasmic simulacra will continuously generate. These simulacra will deal continuous damage to nearby characters. When Lingyuan is gathering hydro or animal adeptal energy, if there are any miasmic simulacra still present, Lingyuan will gather them all as well to power up that attack. Use adeptal energy to eliminate these simulacra. If all miasmic simulacra are eliminated before Lingyuan gathers up adeptal energy, the spirit veins will be stabilized once more, reviving all party members and granting them the protection of the spirit veins for a short duration. While Spirit Veins Protection is active, all members' attack will be increased and they'll be continuously healed. Freeze Lingyuan when she is gathering Hydro Adeptal Energy and then use Shatter, Melt, or Elemental Reactions to break the ice and briefly immobilize her. Attack her with Elemental type attacks to undergo Elemental Reactions with Animo to break the Spirit Wind Pearl she summons and gain. Okay, so it's the same thing, but I just gotta. This is easy. I know how to do this already. I just need to make sure I watch for the locker because I made a god. I have I made a boss battle in this. All right, let's see if she will be wet. Okay, nope. Will you be wet? A Fujin's here with us. I'll beat you to death, I guess. Minion. Human, let me tell you what shall do. Fire arrows in my heart. If you approach up close, dripping with your sword, I'll fight you until the last. You are the only one here who can fight, and when I have crushed your neck, I will triumph. Uh, no, I don't intend to kill you. Why? I do not understand. Well, you are Fujin's friend. Fine. You may ask me one question. You still really care about doing things like that, even though you lost, huh? Then let us exchange questions. Little Mao, do you have any questions? Um, Bluey, why do you have to fight? Can't we all be friends? You bunch of two-legged... And you... Fujin, you do not have the strength to form two legs of your own, yet you wish to talk when they're form and speak to me. But how can humans and wild beasts ever be friends? That's not true, Bluey. You're lying. If that's the case, why didn't you just let those beasts eat me back then? If the humans and beasts can't be friends, then you're a beast and you shouldn't have helped me. 
My actions are sometimes, sometimes beyond my own understanding. You are merely fortunate. Why? Well, why didn't you just eat the mountain as well? She almost bumped into you while, while lost in the fog in the front of the mountain. I saw it. You humans possess such wisdom that even nature submits to your will. In that case, you tell me, why didn't I eat her? <laughs> what fucking question is that? Well, Mount Lysheen is dear to Adeptus Fujin. Let us assume that you are correct. She has told me much about the rain jade right. Perhaps those memories affected my actions. You actually remembered everything I told you. Every year before the rite, you would tell me in that white snake how expectant you were and how nervous. After the rite, you would tell us how the festivities was so fun and lively. You would always speak, and I could not help but listen. Only humans forget. I forget nothing. You have cleared this doubt of mine. Now you may ask a question. Well, Abdetus Fujin, have you any questions? Thank you, Lynette. Just a while back, Lin Yuan, I was telling some stories about our past. Why do you wish to wreck Chen Yu Vale, which we once fought so hard to protect? You planted tea trees, promising to enjoy tea with us. This too, I remember, but that sort of tea no longer exists. I want to change this land. I want to make it like all those millennia ago. You have walked with humans for too long. You have forgotten that you, I, and the snake all came from nature. I knew that you never truly perished, and that you did not depart this place like the snake. So I wish to change this place to form it when you were born. All these years, I have been slowly adjusting the spirit veins. Oh, I get it. So that's where the miasma came from. Correct. Side effects. In the end, the process will change the soil, the waters, and the forest to what they have should have been. <sighs> what the soil, waters, and forest should have been. You truly have forgotten the past. The rivers rose and fell with the rains, and their path was not fixed. The tree... the the tea trees and the flowers were not trimmed to, or cultivated, nor did they exist for humanity. In such an environment, you would regain your old form and frolic once more in the great rivers. You would regain your strength. Spiritual power was back in the land in those days. The wild shrubs grew thick. Now the mountains and forests are silent, and the shimmering voice of the spring waters tinkling like jade can no longer be heard. But you don't understand. You still think you must stop me. Ugh. Lingyuan, I count myself more blessed than most to have lived such a happy life, and in the end, my soul returned to my home. You are the one who does not understand. Yes, and I have never understood. After you defeated me, you should have taken my territory. You planted tea on my mountain and gave that land to the humans. I do not understand why you did this. Chen Yu Vale was once but a nameless land, and we were nameless insects, beasts, and fish. I was the master with an uncultivated mountain, and today that place belongs to neither of us. You took a human form and walked among them. You, re you instituted the rain jade right and helped them change the soil and water. I did not understand then either, but I can see how happy you were. The snake changed into a human form and used her knowledge to create medicines and save the sick, or herb lord. I could understand how agile human fingers could help her do what she wished, but I do not know why it was done. What happened after caused me still more confusion. You fought alongside humans and their so-called gods, and then you perished. Humans fighting each other over territory and survival. Now that I can understand. You both belong to the great river and the mountainous forests. You could have chosen to leave them and live on with me. Let that which is human belong to them and nature belong to nature. Even if our territory were to shrink, we could still live freely. But now you wish to stop me and defend this land subdued by humanity. Answer me. Why? Damn, I did not expect to actually time it that well, but that was pretty sick. <sighs> Ling Yuan, my friend, it is as you say. I do wish to protect them. Do not answer me with my own question. I was asking you why. This Ling Yuan might be a beast, but she sure cares about the order of things, huh? I know. That's how I learned so much from her. So you guys are just discussing stuff in the mountains? Well, not totally. That and... Well, hearing everything Bluey said about Bix's food gene, I thought they'd be happy to meet each other. At first, when I was like you, I didn't understand humanity, and I didn't understand their excessive demands and love of hoarding, or their eternal desire to have more than they need, while caring so little for the needy themselves. Trading and wealth. Like you, I did not understand those concepts and did not understand why they influence human joy and sorrow. But across those long years, I have also seen many other things. The cries of children break my heart, and the sound of an old person's shattered memory saddens me. 
just as though it were all microcosm of those mountains and rivers. Have you noticed them? Seen them? The children that wash their little feet in the streams, the fishermen laughing beneath the light of the rainbow's arc, the moonlight trias of loverbirds, and their figures painted silver. Humans, too, are creatures of this land. Just how different is their innocence from ours? You mean to say that you have chosen to take their side due to these emotions, not through natural principles or logic, and not due to anyone's orders? Well, I suspect that Herb Lord had married much the same reasons as I. <laughs> that said, I'm sure she put it all very differently. I remain unsatisfied with your answer, Fujin. I do not understand. Do you not? I think you've understood for a very long time. When our lord, when our previous god raised the waters, it was you who brought your familiars around to attack the people and drive them to the shelters we had created. I, I just... I just wish to help my friends, to make the wishes reality. Even in doing so means going against nature and the principles you follow? Even if it meant going against nature and the principles I follow, I would do so anyway. Well, then aren't we all that different now, are we? Didn't you choose your own position on account of your feelings? I'm satisfied with the answer, Fujin. Now you may ask a question. Very well. May I ask the next question, Lena and Paimon? We'll ask away. Uh, Paimon can't really think of any good questions at the moment. It says, you've got one, you go right ahead. You acknowledge my answer, acknowledge me, and acknowledge that you made choices based on your own feelings. Now let me ask you. N no, don't ask. You know what I'm going to ask you, right? If I needed your help, would you still make the same choice? That's right. And what's your answer? Yes, I would. Even should another thousand years pass, and even if you asked me a thousand more times, my answer would still be the same. In that case, Ling Yuan, I do in fact need your help. I truly wish to save the water, people of, oh, fucking save the water, save the people of Chen Yu Vale. And so please don't stop me from nursing the water and soil, alright? I promise you, Fujin. You have walked with humans for much time and have learned your cunning, while I'm but a foolish beast. My claws and teeth are sharp, but I am no match for you. Thank you, Ling Yuan. And thank you, Lynette, Paimon, and Little Mao. You have accompanied me for so long, and you've helped me a lot. I wouldn't have made it here without you. <laughs> I'm glad that I helped you, Big Sis. I'm so glad that Bluey got to meet you all, too. I was so worried when you fought. You also have my thanks, Lynette with two ends and Little Mao. It was you who brought Fujin to me, though the circumstances of the meeting were not what I had hoped for. And what about me? What? All right, then. Let us begin. Big Sis Fujin? Big Sis? Where'd she go? Do you still not understand? She used all the energy she accumulated recently to nurse the land. Wait, if that's the case, does that mean... Yes, it's as you suspect. But she struggled so hard too. Though we now have finished nursing the soil and water, the miasma that remains will not disappear immediately, so you have to be careful out there, okay? Eh? Sorry for making y'all see me like this. It's just as Ling Yuan said. I have completely used up the energy I accumulated recently, and I can no longer maintain my favored form. Oh, I thought that... What's wrong? <sighs> nothing, nothing. I'm just glad you're still here, Updated it's Fujin. Seriously, Ling Yuan. What about me? Well, I mean, she wasn't entirely wrong, Paimon. As long as you're still here, Adeptus Fujin. 
Though my form is as it become, I'm far more than comfortable than before. Uh, at first, I was trapped at Carp's Rest and only could reminisce about the outside world through the scent of tea offerings. Had I not met you and Paimon, people of such compatibility with the spirit veins, I would have to, I would have none but my shadow to talk to, much less be able to leave Carp's Rest. Thank you for your concern. Please forgive me, but I must depart now. I kind of need to rest. And another thing, Lingyuan, speak. What else would you have me do or not do? Nothing. I just didn't get to say this due to the circumstances prevailed before, but but it's so good to see you again. I know. <laughs> what a romantic, dude. Thank you all. Eh? Where did that one come from? I should thank you for bringing her back. Safe, smooth, and slippery. Even the way in her fins move is the same as I remember. You sure have a strange way of remembering people, or fish, whatever. I do not know how you did it, nor why you were able to obtain her uptepto energy. All these thousands of years, and I never heard, once heard her voice. Well, it might be due to her unique constitution? I see. However, I am but a foolish beast. Even if I wanted to see her again, I would not know of a better way. I can only spend thousands of years clumsily imitating our methods, regulating the spirit veins in this land. I am quite stupid. <laughs> that, caught me off, that caught me off guard, dude. I'm quite stupid, and I only know this method, and so I did it. It was akin to scooping every droplet from a rushing river, or every grain of sand from the vast desert. I know as well as she would not smile as once she did, or what she once did, even if these mountains were stored to how they once were. She, I, and the snake once laughed and swam happily here. <sighs> These days will never come again. She loves humanity too much and even more than she loves herself. Had I succeeded, she would only hate me. But that would not have mattered to me, so long as she could regain her form and swim free once more. <sighs> and I thought you were more concerned about nature. Of course I care. A land untamed by humans, a land of wild beasts, but that's just a different subject on the matter of Fuji. If she thinks that a land tamed by humans is better, and with the strange tea leaves grown, as, grown on such a land taste superior, then I shall do what pleases her. So thanks. You're welcome. Well, speaking of that, Paimon's curious. What did the tea leaves taste like in the past? When the land changed before, the tea leaves flavor was much closer to what was in the past, apart from some differences due to human influence. Wait, so you mean the weirdly flavored tea cakes were... In that case, I prefer the current flavor profile. Tea leaves cultivated by humanity will be more than your liking, of course. What I do understand, what I do not understand, is Fujin's tastes. If the snake was here, we could ask for her opinion. Perhaps her tastes have also become strange from spending so much time with humans. Before you go, Lynette, I have one more question for you. Those that come from nature will, for some reason, go against nature, against the laws that nature originally followed. Will humans also go against humanity, against the principles they initially followed for certain reason? Well, that depends on the circumstances. You may as well have just said yes. <laughs> Thank you. I received the answer I desired. Well then, little Mao, Paimon, Lynette, we shall meet again. Alright then, see you later, Bluey. Also, remember to take care of Big Sis Fujin, okay? She seems kind of weak right now, but so she could use some extra care. I will. Farewell. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Please wait. I have a question for you as well. Ask then, I do owe you that. If human activities are part of the laws of nature... How would you view humanity? A strange question. In the distant past, they were indeed part of nature, but they are, they are so no longer. That is because... No, I need to give this question more thought. Next time we meet, I'll give you my answer. <laughs> Escort little Mel back to Chowing Village. Yo, this shit was insane. Well, glad you're streaming right now, watching you like, help my insomnia. <laughs> Called herself out. Uh, I, I don't even know when you fucking came by, but hey, welcome to the stream. This is why I love, this is why I love readings and this stuff. I get so engrossed in it. Even though that I'm just kind of doing the same voice, I just like reading the text. It's it, very enjoyable to me. But hey, welcome back. I'm glad I can help you with your insomnia. <laughs> Grab these things. 
because my friends told me that this quest wasn't voiced. So just like the quest of Narcissus Cruise, I was like, I'm gonna fucking read everything. So. Curious, have we already finished this? Am I already done? Like after this is just like free rain. Because my can I go in there? Nope, I can't. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to Chaoying Village. Yes, okay. Have you figured out who the White Snake Herblor Adepti is yet? You know, for this entire time, I have never given it much thought because the uh, the legends say right that Chingsa Village, the snake, became part of the land. So, I might need a refresher because I haven't been to Lyra in so fucking long. But I will, I will see. Maybe, maybe it'll come back to me after I finish this quest. <laughs> oh shit, hey, look at that. It's fucking, it's fucking oat. Mm -hmm. Seems like there's nothing wrong with the elemental reaction here. Why don't we try... <laughs> You're back. We're just saying that good rainfall is bound to bring good tidings. And what do you know, dear guest? You've arrived just on time. How'd it go? Well, it was thanks to Abdeptus Fujin. He explained what happened to Lu and Luo. So you met the legendary Car Abdeptus. Oh my. As one would expect of the young miss of the Fei Yun Commerce Guild. Uh, you really do have friends in high places. Now your water and soil problems should be no more. Well, old Luo, what did I say? I told you it was a soil problem, but you wouldn't listen. If it wasn't for them, who knows when our tea leaf problem would have been solved. <clears throat> that, um, uh, regardless, thank you both for your help, honored guests. With your help and the protection of the Carp Adeptus, I'm sure our village will surely see a great harvest in tea leaves this coming year. Ah, yes, please take these. Take it as a token of our thanks. Right, Paimon almost forgot. We came across this kid during our adventures. Is he from the village too? Hey, Uncle Luo, I'm back. Well, if it isn't you, little Mao, finally come to finally have a mind to come back, huh? Well, you don't seem worried at all. And what is there to be afraid of? The fret about this kid runs around in the mountains all the goddamn time, and he always comes back safe after getting tired. If you ask me, there's been an adeptus looking after him in secret all along. You know, maybe that might even be said the carp adeptus. I've said it before. It wasn't adeptus. It was Bluey. All right, all right, little Mao, don't argue with Luo here. He's just pretending to know what he's talking about. Come to my place later. I'll make you some ooh egg custard. Did I eat that shit and dim some all the guy? Mm. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Now they're pretending to be a good person. Wait, what do you mean pretending to know? In any case, I don't really know how to repay you, dear guests. If you need any help from the future, Chiang Village will be there to lend you a hand. Yay! Okay. Uh, I'm gonna guess. Wait. It's, little... <laughs> it's making sense to me now. <laughs> the white snake. All right. Herb Lord. With all the medicine. Oh my god. Oh, am I? Okay. Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking at your message now. It's not confirmed, but it's very likely a snake we've already met before, considering the backstory. Yeah. That's cute. It's all coming together now. 
Dude, imagine if they just saw, what do you call it? A baiju is, a baiju is just like, oh my god, where the fuck do you want me to go, Changsheng? And she's like, to the mountains! And he's like, oh my fucking god. <laughs> and then it, her, and the Fuji would be like, what the fuck? Who, who the fuck is this? And then, <laughs> and then, and then Ming is just like, what the fuck? You fucking choking this bitch out, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> That's funny. Alright, I see it now. That's funny. Alright. That's actually kind of cool. That, you know, it would be, if they, if they really wanted to confirm it, they could have just been like, hey, I'm gonna, why don't we just slap Baizu in here sometimes? Because it is, he does get some stuff from here, right? At least for that, I think so. Damn. That was, that was a mood lifter for sure. <laughs> that is funny. Okay. All right. Sick. All right. Today was a good day then. Because uh, despite being daylight savings... How long was the stream? There was a two hour stream. I'm honestly surprised it took that little time. But I guess it was a pretty simple story to tell. Because you have VODs for me, like I have my own, like I streamed the entirety of Narcissus and Cruise. And I read every piece of dialogue. So that shit took forever. I mean, granted it was a good quest, but I needed more water man mm. I'm sure there's more stuff right because I know there's some quest things that I grabbed or the jade fragment here and like random stuff and I still haven't because I've been slacking on Genshin since I've had less and less time to do so uh, but yeah, I felt a bit short, but it was good. Yeah, I think it didn't. I think it just didn't overstay its welcome. At the end of the day, I think it was. I think it was a. What you call it? It was a simple story of uh, of friends. Or lovers, I guess, if you want to see it that way. Dude's a fucking. <laughs> but. What I like to know. And that's probably not going to happen, but I'd like to see if I could find Fujin or Lingyuan somewhere around here. But now it seems like a ton of side quests popped up, so I might just do that in my free time. But yeah, I was doing this because I needed, I needed to have this uh, quest documented before uh, 4.5 dropped. Because I still haven't done some of the quests. Um, for example, because I think the only quests I haven't done are here. So this, right? All of this is just the desert area with Sumeru with these things. Fuji, you get to see again after you collect all the spirit carp ocular things. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I have a lot of those to go through. Uh, how many do I have? Uh, does it say? Coupons. Uh, it's the trees like you level up for rewards. It's high quest to unlock. Ah, oh, okay. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Oh yeah, I see it now. Spirit carps. Here we go. Yeah, I've got not a lot, <laughs> but yeah. If I wanted to binge Genshin after like maybe cl just hard clearing HSR, I pretty much only have uh yeah. this to do. Let me check. Yeah, this region is, I barely explored, even though that apparently is not a lot. You can see here I pretty much finished the majority of everything. But you can tell when I stopped, like, hardcore trying with Genshin, because, like, uh, graduation and school and all that, and now I have this. But, honestly, 
I think it, it shouldn't be that bad. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was fun. Let me see. So I know there's some in-game notices. Let me grab these real quick. Retrieve the final votive ranging. Me down here. Yep. And then I know there's also some in-game notices. Let me check. So 4.5 is coming. Let's see. Oh, okay. So you have the maintenance slash update preview. And then... Okay, for the satisfaction. All right, we have blades weaving betwixt brocade. I think I've already viewed that. I think it's got the coins. Oh, here we go. There we go. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. Um. We got Chiori, and we have a triple geo banner. We have my friend's wife, my wife, uh, dog boy, and Mora Gremlin. <laughs> we. So, the thundering seamstress. Uh, got so Shiori, Yunjin, Goro, Dori. What a weird banner. What a strange banner. Maybe is it for you tell? I don't know. Seriously though, what in the world? <laughs> I guess we'll see. I didn't leak her. I didn't see her kit or anything. Yeah, yeah. Ito is the other one, but I'm like, what in the world? Why? Maybe Chori for Yunjin and Dory, and then, uh, because Dory does regenerate energy. So I guess if you really wanted to do like a whole Geo setup, you have Noel, Ito, and Goro, and then you have Dory. With the, um, ooh, wait, hold on. Would Dory actually use the new set now? Let me check, where's Dory? Hold on. So, I know Noblesse is usually the play there, but let me check this. When the party member heals the member, earning effect, when your active party member hits normal plunging, the damage, re oh, wow, wait. This might actually work for Dory now. Song of Day pa Days Past might actually be Dory's new set. Because it not only gives you extra damage on heal, but it heals you better. Huh. Wow. Alright. <laughs> no more clam, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I can understand Goro being on them, but for Dory and Yunjin, yeah. I don't know many people that even like... Hold on. I fucking... YouTube can't... Let's see. Like or play Dory. Yeah. The, um... What do you call it? Like, I've managed to put Dory in some team comps for memes. Like... Double Electro, because um, just in the case if uh, like I ran, because I sometimes try to like kind of skill test myself by not taking any shielders into things and like tank everything, right? Because it's one way to clear, it's one way to clear uh, Abyss with just, you know, the meta stuff and clearing it in one go. But there's also some random stuff. Like I remember a few patches ago, uh, I had Dory, Raiden, um, Kale and Toma for no reason. Just like I, I tried doing that shit, and you discover some random possibilities you can do with other characters that you never really tried before. For example, Dory was always there to heal Raiden because this was during the time when they had the two. Uh, hold on, let me go to the monsters. Um, everyone remember? I remember that uh, abyss. Everyone was complaining about where they had two of. Uh, let me see. Right. 
they had two of these beasts. They had both the water one and the, and the dendro one. Like, during that abyss? Oh my god. That was insane. Is that this one or this one? Either or. Like, these two absolutely murdered everybody. Um, uh, so, during that particular abyss, um, I had Raiden and Dory and Kale. And so, I challenged myself to fight them with that particular comp and Dory saved my ass so many times because not only does she just she's a little ball of HP but um, you also could potentially uh, get your energy back to get more iframes that was fun but yeah I definitely didn't enjoy that one as much as I thought I would however I still think people who complain about um, what do you call it which which one i don't understand the hate for which boss do i got uh... where's the ruined serpent there we go yeah this guy he is not hard at all like dory isn't actually that bad Right, she might be not be optimal, but she's not total garbage. Yeah, some people just might have wanted her to do something different. But honestly, like, she's not great, but she serves her purpose. Uh, that's how I, that's all I really care about. And she does have constant electro app if you happen to have the enemy stun and stuff. So like, you know, no 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 character is truly horrible. It's just like, I'm under the impression that they just don't have their uses yet, but. You know, obviously some characters have been better kitted or have more attention paid to them than others, but yeah. Uh, oh my god. Like, I remember everyone doom posting about Shen Yun, and then suddenly she's the only character that allows you to hit 999999 damage. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And then, um,. Kokumi was considered the worst character in game, yada yada yada. All that kind of stuff. I do feel I still feel bad about Dia mains though. Dia was definitely done dirty. I do feel pretty bad about that. But that didn't stop me from getting her constellations and her weapon. So Dia actually If I remember right, Dia was the reason why I cleared one of those abysses. Uh, I think it was one of the, I think um, it was that horrible fucking one with uh, with the two abyss like cryo like lectors and then the water one. So you get frozen and then you get boomed up like the, the entire time. Dia mitigated so much damage. <laughs> that was a horrible abyss. So, I don't know. She got super hard. I managed to do it, but I'm, like, considered considered by my friends the king of scuff. Oh, Paimon's wondering how... Paimon recalls when she left Chiwang Terrace and she made some sort of sort of jade stone louche. That's fair. I want to have a look. Paimon's worried about how she's doing. Oh. You just want me to go back. Alright, sure. Yeah, the is fun, yeah. It's just, I, I unfortunately, it seems like the devs just kind of like slapped around standard and just kind of like bleh. Because, um, like, they fixed Baiju's problems so fast, like giving you compensation for this and that. And Dia still has like an anti counterintuitive kit, which kind of makes me really sad. But she is my friend's wife, so. Alright. I will end on this one for now. Let's see. Lynette with two ends and Paimon, you're here. Huh? Lingren, why are you over here? Because I can't get in. <laughs> Aw, you locked out. Can't get in. Uh, where can't you get into? Carp's Rest, where Fujin is resting. Aw, look at you. Carp's Rest. Oh, you mean the place Fujin dragged us off way back when? It is an abode sealed by her adeptal energy. I don't have her adeptal energy, thus I cannot go to her. Huh? But you didn't mention anything about before she went back to rest. It escaped my mind. 
Bit late now, Bluey. Yeah, how could you forget something so important as that? Really now. It's because I'm a slow-witted beast. Seeing her, I think of many things and forget many things. It's my fault. Ah. The adeptal energy you possess is sufficient to open the gate at Corp's Rest. So yes, I do need your help. So, wait a sec. So you've been waiting here for us the entire time? I was not waiting for you. I was just looking for a way in the Corp's Rest. Well, that seems like pretty much the same thing to, uh... Well, anyway, we're a bit worried that about Fujin's condition, too. So why don't we go see her together? Fine. Thank you both. Follow me. <laughs> this is fucking cute, dude. One, this is the unlock our right, base. The secluded path. Okay, gotta make sure that I get all the chests. Okay, we should be fine. <laughs> this is the place. The door is open. Just go on forward. Hmm. Now well, that I mention it, when she brought us here before, we could never open the seal. Power requires familiarity. Her power is no exception. Hmm. Ooh. Clarion Echo, and to the archive. Look for the fish! Hmm? Lynette, Paimon, and Lingyuan. Why did you all come here? Whoa, that's Fujin's voice, and it's coming from down below. Well, Lingyuan is a little worried about you. I'm not, I just... Yeah, Lingyuan's been so worried about your health so she can, that she can barely speak. So we just came here without giving you a heads up, but you did the same to us first, you know, so I think we're square now. <laughs> ah, sorry, when I returned here to rest, I think I forgot to unlock the entrance, I'm so sorry. You came here to see me, but I made things harder for you instead. Well, it wasn't much of a hassle, but why are you, uh, hiding in a puddle? Hmm, well, how should I put it? Because I can't return to the form I prefer yet, and with you guys always seeing me in my carp form, I can't help but feel a little... Embarrassed. You are aware that we've already seen it many, many times, right? So you don't need to hide yourself. <laughs> uh, but before I could turn back into human form whenever I wanted, so I thought moving around as a carp was just a matter of convenience. But uh, now all I have is this slick and slippery self, so I find it a bit. Uh, <laughs> that's a bit strange to be so insistent about. But anyway, all that matters is that you're okay. When Lingren said your addictive energy wasn't consumed, it was just dispersed around the mountains and forests and rivers of Chiryu Vale, and that's why you've been weakened so much. So if we were able to collect the scattered adeptal energy just like when we were finding the golden carp in Yaudia Valley, oh, Jesus, that was a tongue twister, then you'd better get better, right? Y yes, at least in theory that's correct, but... Right, 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 so if you see similar carp, we'll just bring back here. That way you'll be recovering much faster. The... That would be too much trouble for you. My trouble, my my power is not yet that feeble. If I simply rest here, oh oh, grammar mistake, Gra grammar mistake. I'm a grammar Nazi now. It's not of a. Well, it's not like even a grammar Nazi thing. It's just spelling. It's not much of a hassle, you know. We'll just keep our eyes peeled if we run into any. Thank you then. However, I don't really want to trouble you any more on my behalf. You've already done so much for me. If the two of you should happen to find any more adeptal energy uh, during your travels, please simply transfer it into the jade here. Though balance has been restored to the water and soil, if we add more power to the rain jade, we can ensure favorable weather and prosperous years to come. And what about you? Really now? I already told you. All I really needed to rest here for a bit. Lynette, Paimon, I'm really grateful and quite happy that you came to visit me. This is the first time anyone has come here since Herblord left. And thank you as well, Lingren. I have done nothing worthy of your thanks. All right, enough of that. Then just think of it as me thanking you for bringing me, for bringing Lynette Paimon here. <laughs> really now. And lastly, let me say thank you once more, Lynette and Paimon, for all you have done. <laughs> the 
They really enjoyed the word slippery in this patch. Yeah, dude. Alright. When you collect the 40, you'll receive the votive rain jade's revelation, which will mark the location of the remaining spirit card. There you go. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> the music here is exceptionally epic for no reason. <laughs> I will save uh, these wishes for uh, when the new banner drops. And that is this Tuesday, if I remember right. Okay. I'm assuming you can just teleport in here. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Oh, there's... Alright, let's go visit my teapot. Because I want to... Uh, make sure that I can get these things back into the teapot player. Okay. So it's got to be these. Oh, hell yeah. That's, that's the one for the books. Sorry. <laughs> the, uh, it's taking me back to when I went back to, the last time I visited my homeland of China was back in like 2016. And we went on a little like riverside, or one of our stops in a tour was like a riverside, like uh, sort of city where it was obviously like a, a huge river going in the middle of everything. It was a really interesting, I think I still have the photos maybe, but I don't think I have it on my computer right now. But uh, it just reminds, the, the entire Chaoying village like arc has reminded me of that small stop I made back in the day. I think I can still find it. I have this little necklace with my name written in it. <laughs> uh, you're nodding off? Don't worry, I'm actually just gonna get off soon too. So thanks for tuning in, man. Or not, man. <laughs> thanks for coming by. I appreciate the company. Oh yeah. You take care of yourself now. Amazonia is fucking sucks. <laughs> and don't forget, daylight savings. Like a couple little earlier now. Alright. As a matter of fact, I didn't change my clocks in here. I think it's still 11, but it's actually 12. <laughs> Sleep well. Well, at least try to. GG's, GG's. That was fun. <laughs>